we went off down to El Cap. And El Cap was a small little village. Um, it was nothing but a few huts. And we were dug in in trenches. And the Egyptians were, I don't know, half a mile away, dug in. And there was no firing going on. Um, and we just patrolled and did various things. Well, I'll come on to a few things. Next to us was billeted a platoon of the French Foreign Legion. Their job was to go down at night the other side of the canal, which was their territory, and just patrol that bit. So they had a boat on the canal and they would go across. And all the way down the canal there were these telegraph poles, which was the thing. And these Frenchmen had hoisted the tricolour above the thing and every night they took it down and they were determined to get this flag flying above the Egyptian line, seriously. Anyway, they were quite amusing. They were all very tough soldiers. They'd all been fighting. They were all paratroopers had been fighting in Dien Bien Phu and in Indonesia. They were tough as old boots. I'll tell you a few stories about them. The um, captain, or the lieutenant, he was a regular. He couldn't speak any English. All he could say to me was, Nasa Caro. <laughs> that was his, that was his expression. But I tell you, I did get on quite well with him because I, could get, I got some whiskey out of the officer's mess, and he loved whiskey. And I got a great bottle of Algerian wine, which was foul, but it was drinkable in return. But they were quite amusing. They paid no regard to what we did. Now, at the side of the Suez Canal, there was a road, which was the Canal Company Road, and the other road, the, and the next to that, there was a canal called the Sweetwater Canal. Now, Port Side was a sort of island. To the south of it was Lake Manzala, and the north of it was the sea, and then there was a canal. So the only way that fresh water came in was this Sweetwater Canal. Now, if you thought of the Sweetwater Canal, it called the Sweetwater Canal, God knows why. There were dead animals in it, there were bodies farther up, I mean it was foul. If we went into it, we were told strictly not to go into that. You got out and you went to, if by chance you had to go into it, or got into it by mistake, or fell into it, you were out to the MO and you got about 16 injections. The fatal one, the one where well, there's Bill Hart's here, which was a very nasty disease which attacked your, attacked your liver. So we were not in. These French boys, they washed in it. They did everything. They cleaned their clothes in it. They didn't care tuppence about it, but anyway, so that's, that was, that's another story about the French. Um, uh, we sat down there. Oh, by the way, the other thing we had... To start with, we had 24-hour ration packs. So you've got a pack like this, it's a square pack, and in it was your food and everything for 24 hours. There were tins of this and tins of that, a packet of cigarettes, a few boiled sweets, lavatory paper, everything in that. You see. It wasn't until we'd established a bit more down there that the, the cooks went down there and we had proper ration. I um, had a very interesting experience. I was sitting there one day with my sergeant and suddenly um, well, came up to me um, Corporal Dines, who was a reservist. He came from the East End of London, Albie Dines, I always remember him. And he said to me, Here you are, sir. Here's your fresh meat mashing for the day. And it was a leg of a dove. This little 
village that had a headman and he had two doves in it on it. And old Corporal Dines managed to catch one of the doves and he attracted the other dove into it by building a little cage and he killed them both. And he cooked them, he plucked them, killed them with a mess and roasted them with a mess tin and a blow lamp. <laughs> 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 This is, this is soldier's ingenuity, you see. And he told us, you know, this is your fresh meat ration for the day. We, we were down there patrolling. Um, it was a pretty boring existence, living in a trench. I lived in a trench with a sergeant, Sergeant Tom Coward. And it was six hours on, six hours off or something like that, you know, during the night. Um, there wasn't an awful lot to do. Um, anyway, we were, after a, a week or two weeks there, we were drawn back to port. Oh, the one other thing. Yes, I will tell you this. I'd forgotten. Um, the Sweetwater Canal was... Um, there was the Suez Canal, the Canal Company Road, and the Sweetwater Canal. Amongst our battalion headquarters there was a troop of tanks I think the second Royal Tank Regiment they lived a life of luxury because they lived in tanks they could brew their own tea and everything you know life was a lot different to them anyway we had to get the tanks some tanks across the Sweetwater Canal they could drive down the road the canal company road but it was difficult for them one had actually got stuck in the Sweetwater Canal and I went and saw this tank that was stuck there and I got in like that and couldn't get out so they had to get one of these huge great recovery vehicles which the, um, they have and get a, a big thick wires and pull it out um, and this is a very interesting thing they detached this thing and they were about to pull it when they chap in charge said now you lot get away get right away from this anyway they started to pull it out and the shackle the shackle that holds the wire to the thing broke and this wire snaked round and hit the turret of this tank and made a dent in it about that deep now if it had hit you it would cut you in half so that's why we were sent off. Anyway, well, the other thing we had to do was to build a Bailey Bridge or help the engineers build the Bailey Bridge. A Bailey Bridge is one of these um, metal bridges which uh, uh, you construct to go across a, a river, river or canal or anything like that, which tanks can go on. Um, before that I will tell you because we used to do when I was at that training school at Gillingham we used to have to do river crossings at night and things like that and we had these we had these funny old pontoons which we had to get across and I remember they had engine on four at the end of each pon pontoon and they were driven across the river by adjusting the engines and the chap on the top sat on the vehicle and you know, guided the engine. There was a boat hook man and a, and a and a fellow with a rope at the corner. And I was a chap with a rope. On one of these things. This is going back. I'd forgotten to mention this. And it was a cold January night. And this clown, um, with a boat hook, swung round and hit me on the forehead. You could still see that gash there. And I went straight into the River Medway, freezing cold, in the middle of the night. Anyway, we did, we did have, you know, life jackets on. Anyway, I was fished out and told to go to the, uh, driven to the local hospital. Um, nowadays, you would have had thermostat jackets on. And you had nothing there. You just shoved in a vehicle and said to them, when you got to the hospital, what do you want, sir? 
Oh, we'll give you a cup of cocoa. A cup of cocoa was the answer to everything in the army, you see, a cup of cocoa. Anyway, I was stitched up and sent back to barracks. Um, but that was digressing about getting this. We had to build this Bailey Bridge, or help build this Bailey Bridge. And I was sent back to, um, with a, um, a, some of my traps, to Portside, to, in, Wang, in, in Loris, to pick up this metal structures to make the Bailey Bridge. Anyway, we've got these things. This is where I nearly snuffed it. And it's frightening when you think about it. Um, we drove down the Canal Company Road and I was in the leading vehicle, which was a, a one tonne, and on the back was some of this Bailey Bridging with fusiliers sitting on top of the Bailey Bridging. We got down the Canal Company Road, not far from where we were supposed to station, when there was a, a jeep, a, a champ or jeep, in front of us. Now, the canal itself goes absolutely, the, it goes down like that, the, the embankment, and the sand and stuff at the top, about the height of this room. And then it, it's all slabs of stone, and then it goes down into the canal, and the canal doesn't go like that, it goes straight down. So, as I was driving down this road, suddenly this paratroop sergeant decided to do a three-point turn in the middle, right in front of us. And my driver went like that. And I suddenly saw the canal straight coming up at me. Fortunately, the front wheels stuck in the sand and the weight of the Bailey bridging kept the back of the vehicle on the road. Um, the fusiliers that were on the back had all dived off. You know, they saw what was that. I was struggling with this door, like doors and army vehicles. You could never open quickly. They all jammed. But anyway, I stuck it. I got out of this vehicle, immediately lit a cigarette, to calm my nerves, got hold of this sergeant, gave him an absolute roasting. I said, right, sergeant, that was your fault. We nearly had a fatal accident here. Your job is to get my vehicle out. Now. So he had to phone to get a, a lorry or a recovery vehicle to pull this vehicle out. Anyway, that, I really saw, you know, that was it. In fact, it, it did happen while we were out there. One of these big things did go into the canal, and that was the end of it, because they just go straight the way down. You'd never get out. Um, so that was my nearest thing um, to, to anything. We did get... Um, we did... Uh, on one of our expeditions back to Port Side, we did get shot at once or twice, once I think, but it was way, way missing over our head. And we just heard the snap and the crack. Um, but all the time, in Port Side, you could always be attacked by snipers and things like that, so that was the danger aspect of it. Anyway, we got back to um, Port Side, where our job was then to sit outside, or to be stationed outside a, I don't know if it was a refinery or something, but I think it probably was. And the locals used to come to the refinery every day to get their petrol or whatever it was, and cooking oils and everything. And there would invariably be a stampede, so you had to, um, sort of hit them and they don't understand queuing you know so <laughs> they would all be fighting to get at the stuff but anyway it was um, we kept them in the orders and um, like that we had one or two casualties um, quite often a lot of them were self inflicted or you know through um not discharging guns properly and things and everything else like that. 